All right. In this video, I want to talk about a view in Christianity about the rapture, where we all agree that there's a rapture, but there's some of us that believe we are raptured before the Great Tribulation, known as the time of Jacob's trouble. Some believe we are taken in the middle of it, or as it's repackaged as a post-trib pre-wrath rapture, or afterwards we are taken and then just come right back and Jesus establishes his kingdom. Uh, but I have a, an issue with this, and let me explain it here with having common ground. What do we all agree on? We all agree that Jesus Christ lived the perfect life and offered that life up for us so that we may have a perfect sacrifice to atone for our sins. That when he died on the cross, by faith we died on the cross so that our past, present, and future, done. Right? Our righteousness, we don't establish our own righteousness. We receive God's righteousness in exchange for giving our lives to Jesus so that he dies for us. We raise with him. So now we get Jesus' perfect life in exchange for ours. We are righteous because Jesus is righteous. We all believe this gospel, the good news of our salvation. We are saved by grace through faith that not of ourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And I know Christians, they believe this, but they'll believe that we are raptured in the middle or at the end of the tribulation. And they'll believe that we'll have to deal with the mark of the beast. And they think that uh, people like me who believe that we're taken before all of this, that we're going to fall away and we'll end up taking the mark of the beast because we weren't raptured. How does that make any sense if you believe the gospel? How does it make sense to end up coming to the Antichrist and being tempted by his mark if you believe the gospel? How does that make any sense? So you think, I'm saved by grace through faith, that not of myself is a gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. Yet, I could lose this salvation that I can't lose because I'm born again. I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. Matter of fact, I'm one spirit with the Lord now. Once saved, always saved. Eternally secure. But if I, I'm here when Antichrist shows up and offers the mark of the beast, I can lose that salvation by taking the mark of the beast. How does that work out? You have this headbutting, contradicting view of saved by the gospel, eternal security, but you can lose that if you take the mark of the beast because whoever takes the mark of the beast is damned with no hope of salvation. Because you see, those who receive the sealing of God cannot be lost. Those who take the seal or the mark of Satan cannot be saved. So how can these two opposing views come together as in somebody who believes we're saved by grace through faith, right? How can that be true if you could lose the salvation by taking Satan's mark? And then all of a sudden it, it turns into another problem. And that is that you actually push people to think that it's okay to take the mark of the beast because you're preaching the gospel through the, the great tribulation. You're preaching the gospel during the time of Jacob's trouble. That we're saved by grace through faith, that not of ourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it doesn't matter. You're, you're not saved by your righteousness. You're saved by God's righteousness. So by faith, you can take the mark because God understands. And you need to do this to take care of yourself and your family. And you open up the idea to, I can take the mark of the beast and still be saved. Because you think this gospel goes through the time of Jacob's trouble, this great tribulation with the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast, when it does not.
So to believe in a mid or a post-trib pre-wrath rapture or a post-tribulation rapture at the end of the entire thing where Christians actually deal with the Antichrist and the mark of the beast doesn't make sense. The two think opposing views cannot be together at the same time. That's why Satan can't come right now while Christians are here because we have authority over him. We can cast Satan and his minions out. Why do you think they're not showing up now? When we leave, that's when the Antichrist can show up with his fallen angels, where they might appear as aliens or time travelers or the ancient gods. They'll appear to the groups in whatever way they'll accept, but definitely not as fallen angels coming to prepare them to fight against God himself. And they're not going to tell them the truth. But you see, they're not doing this now because they can't. So these people have a view that doesn't make sense. It can't exist at the same time. Because whoever is sealed by God, you're sealed by with his Holy Spirit because you've been born again by your belief and trust in the word of God, which is received by the gospel, which I already shared, how Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day. You cannot be lost. You're eternally secure. Jesus already paid for everything you have done, you are doing, and will do. Which means you cannot be here during the time of the mark of the beast because you're saved. If you're saved and you can't be lost, that means you can take the mark of the beast. That that can't exist. It does at the same time. It doesn't make sense. Because whoever takes the mark of the beast, they are thrown into the lake of fire. They are damned. They cannot be saved. They made their choice. Those who receive the mark or the sealing of Satan cannot be saved. So if somebody who's saved by grace takes the mark of the beast, what happens then? They can't be lost, but they can't be saved. <clears throat> Mind blown, right? What goes on there? Either you're going to say, oh, well, you can take the mark of the beast and still be saved, like Donnie B from the YouTube channel Stand for Truth and Ken Hoven and uh, a lot of others have been saying, you can t take the mark of the beast and still be saved. Even Robert Breaker has said it. And uh, that Calvinist preacher... Uh, his name keeps slipping my mind there. Uh, it's just on the tip of my tongue. Uh, but there was that Calvinist guy who, I mean, I think he even did his own translation of the scriptures. Or at least a whole commentary on one of them. Uh, but uh, he was saying, yeah, of course you could take the mark of the beast and still be saved. See, these people... Who are saying, oh, you're you're going to end up taking the mark of the beast because you're not going to be raptured and you're going to go through this. No, if I don't get raptured and I end up coming to the forefront of the Antichrist and the mark of the beast. I'm not going to try to survive the whole thing. I'm going to die. I'm going to go out there saying, Jesus Christ, my savior. This is the Antichrist. Don't take his mark. And I'm going to irritate the shit out of the system until they put me to death. Because I was wrong, right? I can admit that. Oh, I wasn't raptured and this is going on. I was wrong. So if I was wrong, don't listen to my preaching. Don't bother. And I'm just going to go out until they kill me. Because I'm not taking the mark and I'm not going to sit here and try to survive through the whole thing. Nope. I'm not fine with doing that. Your preparation is... Not uh, a trust in God, which is strange because the salvation of your soul completely on God, no effort on your own. But you have to prepare for this and you have to do it by doing your own works, storing up food, water, ammo and guns 
and other survival necessities. You know, make sure you get a generator and plenty of gas. And uh, even if you're able to set up a bunker with solar panels and wind turbines and everything, you know, you got to do it all. So you could be ready. But there's no faith in that. You're trying to save yourself. As if you having all that's going to keep you from end up being tempted to take the mark of the beast. Because all those things just make you a target. And all that stuff's going to be taken from you. And if you try to fight back, those who raise the sword will die by the sword. You can't fight this system that's coming. So I just wanted to make this video to vent about the idiocy of believing the gospel, but thinking you're going to go through this time and have to earn your salvation, even though it was freely given to you by God. It doesn't make any sense. How do you fit those two things together? And this teaching is what's going to lead people to think it's okay to take the mark of the beast. And they're going to be damned forever. My preaching is in no way going to give anybody the slightest hint that they could take the mark of the beast. Because if you take it, you are damned. You cannot be saved. You can't just cut your hand off or have your head chopped off because you took it in your hand or your head and be saved. No, you took it, you're damned. You made your choice. There's no turning back from that. You're like Esau who sold his birthright. And even though he sought repentance with tears and sorrow, he didn't get it. That's going to be you if you take that mark. My point of view, in what I'm teaching, there is going to be nothing there for you to twist or mistaken to think it's okay to take the mark of the beast. I encourage you, if you're here and you're going through this time, to die. Because if you die... You are safe, and you're going to be a, away from the temptation. Just go out there and drive them mad with the preaching of Jesus Christ until they kill you, and now you don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to worry about any of that, storing up food and suffering through everything that's to come. No, just go out there and be a martyr for Jesus. You didn't accept him giving your his life to you now? Well, you give your life to him then. I'm leaving nothing there for you to take, to think that you can take the mark of the beast and be saved. But these people, they are. And some of them are even plainly saying, yeah, you, you, you could take it and maybe be saved. I'm not sure. Leaving some doubt for you to think, okay, maybe I can take it. And some are straight up saying, you could take it. John MacArthur, that's the Calvinist preacher who was saying, yeah, you could take the mark of the beast and be saved. Because how else could you be saved during this time? By dying? By not taking it? So, uh, I could go on and on and just keep restating this because this is just ridiculous. And they're leading people to hell while accusing us to leading people to some kind of damnation. How? Explain that to me. I lead people to the cross. They accept Jesus Christ. Their soul is saved. They don't have to worry about anything. They will be taken before all this happens. If I am wrong, die. You preparing, trying to get food and water, all that, that's a lack of faith in God. And you're just going to be a target. You're going to make things rougher for yourself when everybody comes for you. You try to fight and shoot. Well, we're told you live by the sword, you die by the sword during this time. So you try to fight what's going on. You will die. So you can die that way. You can go be preaching, and die a martyr. Then you don't got to worry about being tempted by it all. You try to go survive dealing with the elements and with people coming after you and with the cold, the heat, the weather and this hunger and the thirst. And the sickness, and you want to deal with that for seven years, it's going to be very tempting to take that mark. So just die.
So nowhere in my teaching are you going to be led astray in any way whatsoever. Because even if I'm wrong about being taken before all this happens, I'm not giving you anything to justify taking that mark. Nothing. These people, on the other hand, no. They say they want you to prepare physically. Storing up food, water, ammo, all this stuff. So that you aren't tempted at all. But you see this temptation is going to come upon everybody. Everyone. The temptation comes upon the whole world that's still here. It doesn't come upon that church in Philadelphia. Because they're not here. So you see, God would be a liar if he doesn't take that church of Philadelphia. Because he says that temptation is going to come upon all those that dwell on the earth. Well, if the church is here, that temptation is going to come upon them. But he says he's going to keep the church from the temptation. So to keep them from that temptation, they can't be on the earth. Because it's going to come upon all those that dwell on the earth. Just to give you a little tidbit about a, a rapture before all this actually hits the fan. But I, I can just restate this and keep rambling. So I'm going to stop here. Thanks for watching. Take care. All right, here's the three verses that I like to put in all the videos here. Isaiah 34, 16, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read so that Jesus doesn't tell you what he tells the Sadducees here in Matthew 22, 29. Ye do err not knowing the scriptures. It's not that you err in error because you don't know the, the one true church that happens to be your denomination or that you don't know your, the, the fundamental beliefs or the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed or whatever creed, or that you don't know the magisterium or the clergy or you don't know your favorite pastor or priest, that's why you're in error. No, you're in error because you don't know the scriptures. You need the scriptures to test to see whether or not those are correct, whether those are the right traditions, whether those are legitimate clergy, whether that church is actually following God, and whether those creeds line up. Those fundamental beliefs are found in the scriptures because... Knowing the scriptures is knowing God. Like we read here in John 17, 3, Jesus says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And this is a deep knowing. As Adam knew Eve, and she conceived, you need to know God in like manner, so that you may be born again, that his word, his seed, it abides in your heart. Will you truly believe that Jesus Christ God in the flesh that he died in your place and gives you his life in exchange so that your righteousness your good and your bad your life past present and future died 2,000 years ago your life is his he can do what he wants with it he puts it to death and he gives you his life in exchange his perfect eternal life that's the deep knowing you need to know of God so there you go. Do you know him? Do you want to know him? Get to know him. Thanks again for watching. Take care. That fella couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? So that fella didn't take the sacraments, didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary, didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe, didn't tithe. He went to heaven, he went to hell. You say? Didn't keep the law, he didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments, he broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule, he didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory, he woke up in the pit. Are you saved? You're saved, but you're not saved. You're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest by kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. It's like that. <laughs> you have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that. <laughs>